Turning now to Weather Week, exploring summer threats. One of the most dangerous aspects of a hurricane is the storm surge. It's not just a concern in the southern part of the state, but also a concern for people living along Narragansett and Buzzards Bay. Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca joins us now with the danger, dangers these surges can bring. Tony? Of course, when it comes to a storm surge with a tropical storm or an approaching hurricane, the south coast gets the most attention. But you have to keep in mind that communities further up the bay away from the ocean still have a danger as well. When was the last major Category 3 hurricane to hit our area? You might think it was Hurricane Bob, but it was actually Hurricane Carol. You know, we're standing here on a section of Oakland Beach that was destroyed in 1954. You and I, where we are now, if a Category 3 hurricane hit tomorrow, would be 10 feet underwater. David Valley from the National Weather Service says Hurricane Carol is a great example of how it's not just the south coast that can go underwater. Vulnerable spots include the shores of Narragansett Bay and many other inlets, harbors, and rivers. It's hard to fathom water traveling 8 to 10 blocks inland up Oakland Beach into this neighborhood area if you haven't seen it. Valley points out that Carol's path was the worst case scenario for us with the eye going over Long Island, New York and Eastern Connecticut. This generates a massive onshore push of wind from the south. So all of that energy that's building that large storm surge, that rise of ocean water above the astronomical tide has got one place to go and that's up Narragansett Bay. And when it gets inland, it's got one thing to do and that's to go up in its elevation. Of course, it's not just open beach in the city of Warwick that is at risk. Coming farther up the bay, the towns of Barrington, of Bristol, Warren. These are locations that could see quite a bit of storm surge, Barrington in particular, because they have the Palmer River and the Barrington River to deal with. Even though Sandy was not a major hurricane, it was certainly a big deal. It destroyed parts of the westerly coastline and it also pushed water up the Warren River, leading to major damage and flooding to the Wharf Tavern. The hurricane of 1938 brought in such a quick storm surge that some witnesses described it as a tidal wave sweeping over downtown Providence. But since then, the Fox Point hurricane barrier was built. It's designed to protect downtown Providence from a major hurricane, but that's just from storm surge. Rainfall flooding has to be handled differently. That barrier has four hydraulic pumps that will draw that water down in advance so that we don't create flooding behind the barrier due to runoff of rainfall. So how can residents living near the bay or high-risk rivers prepare? Check out Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency's evacuation maps online now so when the next storm approaches, you're prepared. It takes Tony about eight to 10 hours to clear the coastline, to look at our evacuation areas and get everybody out. But they've got to be willing to do it when the sun's out the day before the storm, not the morning of. Storm surge watches and warnings are issued well in advance of an approaching hurricane or tropical storm, so you'll know if your area is at a flood risk. You can find this specific information for your neighborhood on our website at WPRI.com. I'm meteorologist Tony Petraka. Our Weather Week coverage continues tomorrow on 12 News at 530. We're going to take a closer look at Rhode Island's new climate law and what goals are in place for the ocean state's future. And a reminder, you can find more on these stories and in-depth weather coverage on WPRI.com. We saw Tony talking about the storm surges, certainly something to keep in mind if you live along the coast this hurricane season. And, and you think about it. Yeah, well, go ahead, Shannon. I was just going to say, what, what can we expect tonight, Tony? But but please, I'm, I'm interested to learn more about the storm surges. Well, you, you think about it, you know, before the, the hurricane barrier was built, you saw in that story, and, you know, the storm surge making it to the front stairs of, of City Hall. So it's not just the south coast uh, problem, but rather about communities well up the bay. Let me show you kind of the structure of what a storm surge looks like. And quite simply, it's the rise in water above mean sea level. Now, in a minimal hurricane, it can be anywhere from three to four, even five feet. But in strong hurricanes like Carol and the 1938 hurricane, it can be well over uh, 12 feet above mean sea level. And the geography of both Narragansett and Buzzards Bay is such that it starts off very wide at the open Atlantic, but then gets very narrow the further north you go. So the water is forced to rise very rapidly as it moves north. So it's all these little inlets, uh, Goddard Park, uh, Oakland Beach, the Sakonet River, all these inlets that have to be mindful of a storm surge. It's not just a westerly Narragansett South Coast issue, but communities further up the bay as well. Fortunately, nothing out there in the Atlantic. It's been relatively quiet for now, but the core of the hurricane season really kicks in during August and September.